Today, I'd like to take a few minutes and quickly go over the erection sequence from start to finish. Basically, a step-by-step -step guide. Where to start, uh, what steps to take, uh, in order so that you don't accidentally get ahead of yourself and have to backtrack on the job site. The first place to start is pretty obvious. You're going to want to start on the sidewall columns, preferably in a brace bay if you have that. Once you get a couple of columns set, add a few girts, and then you can go ahead and start to square and plumb those things before you tighten any bolts down. Once you've got all of your wall columns and the girts on the sidewalls, then you can go ahead and move over to the end wall columns. Don't start hanging rafters yet, let's get all of our girts on. I like to do the end walls last, just because the frames or the other columns in those girts will give them a little bit of extra support. Once that's done, we can move to the rafters. Starting at one end, usually on, a, on an end wall, uh, we'll hang that rafter, and then hang the second rafter and start working our way down the building and uh, place in all of your purlins as you go. It's best to bolt the rafters together on the ground. So if you have a, uh, an A-frame or a gable-style building, go ahead and bolt them together on the ground and then fly them into place. While we're talking about the primary and secondary framing going up, it's a good time to, uh, for me to explain the girt and the purlin lapping. The girt and the purlin, you know, they're, they're basically the same thing, usually Z-shaped members. But what we do is we have one side that is run a little bit thinner on the flange and the other flange is a little bit a little bit taller usually uh, like on a on a two and a half inch girt you'll have one that's two and an eighth inches and then the other flange will be two and three eighths inches if, if you have them backwards they'll they'll bend open and, and they'll just cause some problems they won't fit correct so make sure that the girt is in the correct orientation uh, sometimes depending on the machine that's roll forming them there will be an arrow and that arrow doesn't port, point towards the inside or the outside of the building it points to the uh, bigger flange, just so when you're up in the air, moving stuff around, you can see that pretty easily. Now that the primary and secondary framing is, is mostly complete, there's a few things that we're gonna wanna do uh, before we start actually sheeting the building or hanging any insulation. Uh, the first place is to go ahead and install all of the base angle to the concrete at the foundation so the bottom of your panels uh, has something to tie into. Uh, 20 inches on center, there's a few ways to do this. You can use the tap cons, you can use the the hammer sets, I, I prefer, prefer the hammer sets. They're faster, they're easier, they're a little bit less expensive, and the, the tap cons uh, can sometimes break. Uh, that just causes some problems. So a quarter inch by two and a half is usually good enough. Uh, once the base angle is done, then we need to do the rake angles. The rake angle is uh, basically the same thing as, a, as the base, usually a four by two, 14 gauge angle, and it hangs off of the end of the purlins on the gable side of the building. Uh, that way the wall panel has something to tie into at the very top. Uh, then we can move on to uh, any personnel door framed openings that we need to install. So if you have one of our personnel door kits, uh, we're going to install that into the building uh, before we start sheeting. Uh, once that door frame is installed, go ahead and install the door leaf just to make sure that the door is working correctly and that you're happy with it because once you get the wall sheets on, you really can't move that frame around to uh, square it up or fix any way that it's rolling. Um, and then it's time to trim. You can start trimming all of your framed openings, uh, including the personnel door framed openings. Uh, cover trim first. So get your cover trim on, and then uh, you can move to the outside trims for, the, uh, for the, the top of the framed openings. You're gonna wanna install that drip trim first, and then install your jam trim. Once we have all of the trim on the building, uh, as, or at least those trims on the building, then we can go ahead and move over to uh, starting to do the wall sheets. Important to know your orientation or the way that you want your panels to come. So there is a, uh, a prevailing view or prevailing wind uh, way to do the panels, but uh, I, I like to do it based on which way the building is coming or which way you're looking at the building. So if you're looking at the building from your house or your driveway or something, uh, you're gonna wanna start your sheets farthest away from you and then sheet towards the view. Uh, that you're looking at. Or if wind blows in a very specific direction, uh, it's good to hide that lap um, or, or do those panels with the direction the wind blows. It, it, it's not really, I've never seen it cause any problems, but I've heard about it. 
So uh, it can sheet in, in either direction, but that's the way we like to do it. Uh, if you're hanging insulation, uh, you'll be hanging insulation at the same time you're doing your wall panels if it's uh, compression insulation, which is st pretty standard for everybody. Um, and start at the steel line. I've gone over steel line in a couple of other videos. Um, if you have any questions on that, you can always give us a call, but we will do a video later on down the road that's specific to uh, uh, what exactly the steel line means and, and how we line things up on the building. But uh, start sheeting, and if you get to a framed opening, you may have to trim your, your panel around the framed opening. Make sure to leave a kerf there where the panel can slide in uh, at, the, at the drip trim for the top of the framed opening and then continue on. Uh, now it's time to do some more trim before we can move up to the roof. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to install after all the walls are on are your corner trims. Uh, it needs to go in this, it, it needs to go step by step like this because other trims land on top of that. So you really can't come and put this stuff in later. So uh, it is time to go ahead and put on the, the corner trims and then go ahead and put on the eave trim, the low eave trim. Uh, so if it's a flat eave trim, like if you have gutters or if you're just using the standard trim, go ahead and install that. And then, uh, or if you have sculpture trim, go ahead and install that as well. Uh, that has to be done before we put the roof on, particularly important if the, if the roof is gonna be insulated. If the roof's not insulated, you can sometimes get away with uh, putting the roof on first and then sliding that trim up underneath the roof sheet before you put the screws in, but it, it's really not the right way to do it. Uh, I know some erectors like to do it that way, but if you have insulation, it's, it's literally impossible to get that trim up in there correctly. So uh, go ahead and install all of that uh, eave trim. And that's, that's pretty much it as far as the walls go, or before at least you can move on to the roof. Now on the roof, uh, assuming that it's insulated, you're gonna wanna sheet the building and insulate at the same time. Uh, and you're gonna start at one end of the building. It doesn't really matter for prevailing view, it's way up in the air, but uh, uh, maybe you can see it, but it might be something that you want to consider or at least do it the easiest way. Um, start with your starter roll of insulation, throw on some roof pan throw on two roof panels, and uh, then keep adding insulation and doing roof panels. It's important, uh, it's important that if your building is uh, 412 pitch or, or, or flatter, uh, you're going to have a die form ridge cap unless you specifically ask for a flat ridge cap with like a I think we call it a ridge row. Uh, what's important is that you keep your panels in the correct modulation. Uh, so you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself on one, side of the, on one side of the roof because when you start to do these panels, you might not be able to come back and get that ridge cap to fit perfect. So I usually throw up two or three panels on both sides, uh, making sure to keep my modulation correct and then go ahead and install those ridge caps. That way, if there is anything that's starting to get a little bit out of, out of alignment, uh, we can correct for it quickly before it becomes a real big problem later on down the road. When, depending on the length of your building, if it's not perfectly divisible by three, uh, you're gonna have to uh, cut uh, the last panel. We don't do this on the walls because water setting between the panels really isn't as big of a problem. You don't wanna have a full sheet and then lay another full sheet on top of that just to get your other foot at the end of the building. You wanna go ahead and rip that panel down uh, so that uh, there isn't any panel on panel contact that isn't mastic protected. After you get your two pieces or four piece or whatever it is, after you get that rake trim installed, then you can do your peak box, uh, which is just the box on top of the building that seals that up, makes it look nice. Uh, and then you can move over to the, uh, to the corners. Uh, generally, we send out pre-assembled uh, corner boxes that just slide on. If you have the sculptured low eave trim, you are gonna have to do some trimming on that because it's designed for a gutter. Uh, but if, it's, uh, if you have gutters, you'll wanna actually install your gutters first. Uh, and then that peak box or that, uh, I'm sorry, that corner box will just slide on perfectly in just a handful of pop rivets. Then you're gonna wanna go through, there's always gonna be little things that you gotta go back and fix, a hole here, something there, little checklist things. This is pretty universal for any metal building, so uh, even if it's not a great Western building, uh, these step-by-steps are, are gonna be just about the same for uh, any pre-engineered steel building. All right, I mean, that pretty much goes over everything. I hope that you found it useful. I appreciate you uh, coming into my house and hanging out with me. I'm sure uh, you know most of us are stuck at home, and I hope that you guys are doing well and uh, really nothing but the best to you and yours as we deal with all of this, but we will get through it. And uh, as always, build great, and 
I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.